Convention on Biological Diversity. The Convention on Biological Diversity, CBD, known informally as the Biodiversity Convention, is a multilateral treaty. The convention has three main goals, including the conservation of biological diversity, or biodiversity, the sustainable use of its components, and the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from genetic resources. In other words, its objective is to develop national strategies for the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity. It is often seen as the key document regarding sustainable development. The convention was opened for signature at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro on 5 June 1992 and entered into force on December 29, 1993. CBD has two supplementary agreements, Cartagena Protocol and Nagoya Protocol. The Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety to the Convention on Biological Diversity is an international treaty governing the movements of living modified organisms LMOs resulting from modern biotechnology from one country to another. It was adopted on January 29, 2000 as a supplementary agreement to the Convention Biological Diversity and entered into force on September 11, 2003. The Nagoya Protocol on Access to Genetic Resources and the Fair and Equitable Sharing of Benefits Arising from Their Utilization, ABS, to the Convention on Biological Diversity is a supplementary agreement to the Convention on Biological Diversity. It provides a transparent legal framework for the effective implementation of one of the three objectives of the CBD, the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising out of the utilization of genetic resources. The Nagoya Protocol on ABS was adopted on October 29, 2010 in Nagoya. Japan and entered into force on October 12, 2014, 90 days after the deposit of the 50th Instrument of Ratification. Its objective is the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the utilization of genetic resources, thereby contributing to the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity. The notion of an international convention on biodiversity was conceived at a United Nations Environment Program, UNEP. Ad Hoc Working Group of Experts in Biological Diversity in November 1988. The subsequent year, the Ad Hoc Working Group of Technical and Legal Experts was established for the drafting of a legal text which addressed the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity, as well as the sharing of benefits arising from their utilization with sovereign states and local communities. In 1991, an intergovernmental negotiating committee was established, tasked with finalizing the convention's text. A conference for the adoption of the agreed text of the Convention on Biological Diversity was held in Nairobi, Kenya, in 1992, and its conclusions were distilled in the Nairobi Final Act. The Convention's text was opened for signature on June 5, 1992 at the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development the Rio Earth Summit. By its closing date, June 4, 1993, the Convention had received 168 signatures. It entered into force on December 29, 1993. The convention recognized for the first time in international law that the conservation of biodiversity is a common concern of humankind and is an integral part of the development process. The agreement covers all ecosystems, species, and genetic resources. It links traditional conservation efforts to the economic goal of using biological resources sustainably. It sets principles for the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising from the use of genetic resources, notably those destined for commercial use. It also covers the rapidly expanding field of biotechnology through its Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety, addressing technology development and transfer, benefit sharing and biosafety issues. Importantly, the convention is legally binding, countries that join it parties are obliged to implement its provisions. The convention reminds decision makers that natural resources are not infinite and sets out a philosophy of sustainable use. While past conservation efforts were aimed at protecting particular species and habitats, the convention recognizes that ecosystems, species, and genes must be used for the benefit of humans. However, this should be done in a way and at a rate that does not lead to the long term decline of biological diversity. The convention also offers decision-makers guidance based on the precautionary principle which demands that where there is a threat of significant reduction or loss of biological diversity, lack of full scientific certainty should not be used as a reason for postponing measures to avoid or minimize such a threat. The convention acknowledges that substantial investments are required to conserve biological diversity. It argues, however, that conservation will bring us significant environmental, economic and social benefits in return. The Convention on Biological Diversity of 2010 banned some forms of geoengineering. Some of the many issues dealt with under the convention include 
The Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety of the Convention, also known as the Biosafety Protocol, was adopted in January 2000. The Biosafety Protocol seeks to protect biological diversity from the potential risks posed by living modified organisms resulting from modern biotechnology. The Biosafety Protocol makes clear that products from new technologies must be based on the precautionary principle and allow developing nations to balance public health against economic benefits. It will for example let countries ban imports of a genetically modified organism if they feel there is not enough scientific evidence the product is safe and requires exporters to label shipments containing genetically modified commodities such as corn or cotton. The required number of 50 instruments of ratification slash accession slash approval slash acceptance by countries was reached in May 2003. In accordance with the provisions of its Article 37, the protocol entered into force on September 11, 2003. In April 2002, the parties of the UNCBD adopted the recommendations of the Gran Canaria Declaration calling for a global plant conservation strategy and adopted a 16-point plan aiming to slow the rate of plant extinctions around the world by 2010. As of 2016, the convention has 198 parties, which includes 195 states and the European Union. All UN member states, with the exception of the United States, have ratified the treaty. Non-UN member states that have ratified are the Cook Islands, Niue, and the State of Palestine. The Holy See and the states with limited recognition are non-parties. The U.S. has signed but not ratified the treaty, and has not announced plans to ratify it. Conference of the Parties The Convention's governing body is the Conference of the Parties, COP, consisting of all governments, and regional economic integration organizations, that have ratified the treaty. This ultimate authority reviews progress under the Convention, identifies new priorities, and sets work plans for members. The COP can also make amendments to the Convention, create expert advisory bodies, review progress reports by member nations, and collaborate with other international organizations and agreements. The Conference of the Parties uses expertise and support from several other bodies that are established by the Convention. In addition to committees or mechanisms established on an ad hoc basis, two main organs are Secretary at the CBD Secretariat, based in Montreal, operates under the United Nations Environment Program. Its main functions are to organize meetings, draft documents, assist member governments in the implementation of the program of work, coordinate with other international organizations, and collect and disseminate information. Subsidiary Body for Scientific, Technical and Technological Advice, SPSTA The SPSTA is a committee composed of experts from member governments competent in relevant fields. It plays a key role in making recommendations to the COP on scientific and technical issues. The 13th meeting of the SPSTA, or SPSTA 13, Held from 18 February 22, 2008 at the FAO headquarters in Rome, Italy. Dotsps to 13 delegates finalized and adopted recommendations on the in-depth reviews of the work programs on agricultural and forest biodiversity and Spsta's modus operandi for the consideration of new and emerging issues, as well as on inland waters biodiversity, marine biodiversity, invasive alien species, and biodiversity and climate change. The current chairperson of the SPSTA is Dr. Teresa Mundit de Lim of the Philippines. National Biodiversity Strategies and Action Plans, NBSAPs, are the principal instruments for implementing the Convention at the national level, Article 6. The Convention requires countries to prepare a National Biodiversity Strategy, or equivalent instrument, and to ensure that this strategy is mainstreamed in TAFI planning and activities of all those sectors whose activities can have an impact positive and negative, on biodiversity. To date, February 1, 2012, 173 parties have developed NPSAPs in line with Article 6. For example, the United Kingdom, New Zealand and Tanzania have carried out elaborate responses to conserve individual species and specific habitats. The United States of America, a signatory who has not yet ratified the treaty, has produced one of the most thorough implementation programs through species recovery programs and other mechanisms long in place in the USA for species conservation. Singapore has also established a detailed National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan. The National Biodiversity Center of Singapore represents Singapore in the Convention for Biological Diversity. In accordance with Article 26 of the Convention, parties prepare national reports on the status of implementation of the Convention. The current executive secretary is Christiana Pasca Palmer, who took up this post on March 17, 2017.
Braulio Ferrer de Souza Dish was the previous executive secretary. The NACOA Protocol on Access to Genetic Resources and the Fair and Equitable Sharing of Benefits Arising from Their Utilization to the Convention on Biological Diversity is a supplementary agreement to the Convention on Biological Diversity. It provides a transparent legal framework for the effective implementation of one of the three objectives of the CBD, the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising out of the utilization of genetic resources. The protocol was adopted on October 29, 2010 in Nagoya, Aichi Province, Japan, and entered into force on October 12, 2014. Its objective is the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the utilization of genetic resources, thereby contributing to the conservation and sustainability of biodiversity. The first ordinary meeting of the parties to the convention took place in November and December 1994, in Nassau, Bahamas. The second ordinary meeting of the parties to the convention took place in November 1995, in Jakarta, Indonesia. The third ordinary meeting of the parties to the convention took place in November 1996, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. The fourth ordinary meeting of the parties to the convention took place in May 1998, in Bratislava. Slovakia. The first extraordinary meeting of the Conference of the Parties took place in February 1999, in Cartagena, Colombia. The fifth ordinary meeting of the Parties to the Convention took place in May 2000, in Nairobi, Kenya. The sixth ordinary meeting of the Parties to the Convention took place in April 2002, in The Hague, Netherlands. The seventh ordinary meeting of the Parties to the Convention took place in February 2004, in Kuala Lumpur. Malaysia. The eighth ordinary meeting of the parties to the convention took place in March 2006, in Cuitipa, Brazil. The ninth ordinary meeting of the parties to the convention took place in May 2008, in Bonn, Germany. The tenth ordinary meeting of the parties to the convention took place in October 2010, in Nagoya, Japan. Leading up to the conference of the parties, 11 Colombian pesos, meeting on biodiversity in Hyderabad, India 2012. Preparations for a worldwide views on biodiversity has begun, involving old and new partners and building on the experiences from the worldwide views on global warming. Under the theme, Biodiversity for Sustainable Development, thousands of representatives of governments, NGOs, indigenous peoples, scientists and the private sector gathered in Pyeongchang, Republic of Korea in October 2014 for the 12th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to the Convention Biological Diversity, 12 Colombian Pesos. From 6 October 17, 2014, parties discussed the implementation of the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity 2011-2020 and its Saichi Biodiversity Targets, which are to be achieved by the end of this decade. The results of Global Biodiversity Outlook 4, the flagship assessment report of the CBD inform the discussions. The conference gave a midterm evaluation to the UN Decade on Biodiversity, 2011 2020, initiative, which aims to promote the conservation and sustainable use of nature. At the end of the meeting, the meeting adopted the Pyeongchang Roadmap, which addresses ways to achieve biodiversity through technology cooperation, funding, and strengthening the capacity of developing countries. The 13th Ordinary Meeting of the Parties to the Convention took place between 2 and December 17, 2016, in Cancun. Mexico. 2010 was the International Year of Biodiversity and the Secretariat of the CBD was its focal point. Following a recommendation of CBD signatories during 10 Colombian pesos at Nagoya in October 2010, the UN, on December 22, 2010, declared 2011-2020 as the United Nations Decade on Biodiversity. There have been criticisms against CBD that the convention has been weakened in implementation due to the resistance of Western countries to the implementation of the pro-South provisions of the convention. CBD is also regarded as a case of a hard treaty gone soft in the implementation trajectory. The argument to enforce its treaty as a legally binding multilateral instrument with the conference of parties reviewing the infractions and non-compliance is also gaining strength. Although the convention explicitly states that all forms of life are covered by its provisions, examination of reports and of national biodiversity strategies and action plans submitted by participating countries shows that in practice this is not happening. The fifth report of the European Union, for example, makes frequent reference to animals, particularly fish, and plants, but does not mention bacteria, 
Fungi or protists at all. The International Society for Fungal Conservation has assessed more than 100 of these CBD documents for their coverage of fungi using defined criteria to place each in one of six categories. No documents were assessed as good or adequate, less than 10% as nearly adequate or poor, and the rest as deficient, seriously deficient or totally deficient. Furthermore, intensive monoculture and human overpopulation are the two most pertinent biodiversity issues to address. Scientists working with biodiversity and medical research are expressing fears that the Nagoya Protocol is counterproductive, and will, will hamper disease prevention and conservation efforts, and that the threat of imprisonment of scientists will have a chilling effect on research. Non commercial researchers and institutions such as natural history museums fear maintaining biological reference collections and exchanging material between institutions will become difficult and medical researchers have expressed alarm at plans to expand the protocol to make it illegal to publicly share genetics information, for example via GenBank. This article is partly based on the relevant entry in the CIA World Factbook, edition. There are indeed several comprehensive publications on the subject, the given reference covers only one small aspect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.